Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. It is March the 23rd, 2012. Now, keep in mind, we take risks here on YouTube, on my channel, and there are a few fights this weekend in which, quite frankly, I think the underdog wins the fight. For me, and this is just a weekend roundup before it happens, the fighter I'm watching the most this weekend of all the fights, and there are several, is a fighter who I consider to be a ringer. A guy who, for whatever reason, is, in my opinion, vastly underrated. And if he wins his fight, quite frankly, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with at 154 pounds. He's the underdog. He's Carlos Molina. He's a plus 170 underdog. And he's fighting HBO favorite James Kirkland. Now, if you look closely at James Kirkland, you're going to see some things that, quite frankly, are jarring. James Kirkland hasn't gone eight rounds since something like 2008, right? Most of his fights end early. He has one of boxing's highest knockout ratios. He's also a southpaw. Now, all of that said, and given that Carlos Molina at one point in his career lost three in a row. All of that said, I believe the fight is a mismatch in the middle of the ring. As long as these fighters are off the ropes, as long as both have room to maneuver, I believe that Carlos Molina should have the upper hand. Molina is the better boxer. He's not a puncher. He's a boxer. He's a technician, right, of the highest order. This is a guy who years ago, when he was completely unknown, got a draw against the current middleweight champion, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And I'm here to tell you that if you see the tape of that fight, it's clear that Molina won that fight by a wide margin. Molina also fought Erislandi Lara. Now the problem with boxing is sometimes you have uncrowned champions. You have guys who are much better than advertised and when they fight each other and neither has a big name the public doesn't know how to gauge it. Well we now know off of Lara's subsequent fight to Paul Williams that Lara is a major player in the sport. He's a major talent. Right? Well, I'm here to tell you Molina got a draw against Lara and Lara, we're finding out, is one of the toughest outs at 154 pounds. If you look further, you're going to see that Molina was a huge underdog against Kermit Cintron in a fight, really, that Cintron needed to win to further his career. And not only did Molina completely outbox Cintron, right, but he did so in the middle of the ring in really such an emphatic fashion that people started asking the question of whether Cintron was a shot fighter. Now, my point is simply, maybe Cintron's problem was the man he was fighting, Carlos Molina. The million dollar question for me this weekend regarding Molina, who's a plus 170 underdog, is simply whether or not he can avoid being pinned on the ropes by James Kirkland as Kirkland pinned Alfredo Angulo. Right, As long as Molina is able to fight the fight, 
that Juan Manuel Marquez fought against Manny Pacquiao, where even though he's backing up, he didn't allow himself to get pinned on the ropes and worked over like Pacquiao worked over Eric Morales up against the ropes at the end of their last fight. As long as Molina is able to keep this fight in the middle of the ring, I think he beats James Kirkland. And let me go further. If you have a fighter at 154 who got a draw with Lara, who has beaten Kermit Cintron, and who has beaten James Kirkland, and who got a draw with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., then I believe the biggest names at 154 pounds have to look at him as a viable opponent. I think Carlos Molina is a live dog, not only in this fight, but in future fights, depending on the matchup. He's just simply, in my opinion, too slick for the favorite James Kirkland. Kirkland doesn't move his head. Quite frankly, is quite limited in the middle of the ring. What he does is he assaults you with volume. He throws a lot of punches. He gets up on your chest and doesn't let you breathe. He's prepared to trade punches with you. He'll leave himself open, hoping you leave yourself open, and then he tries to pin you on the ropes and work you over. Molina is the opposite. Molina is a fighter who makes you miss, right? He doesn't want to trade with you. He wants to hit you and then get out of the way of your punches. Not only that, like Orlando Salido, He's working angles. In other words, when you look at Carlos Molina, he's never right in front of you. He's always off at angles, and he's a counterpuncher. Now, Molina, in interviews, has talked about studying the Ashita tape. Ashita knocked Kirkland down three times in the first round, the first with a left hand, the other two with two straight right hands. And Molina, who only has six knockouts, career. Believes that he can hurt James Kirkland. I take him seriously. This is a 10 round fight. We also don't know what's going to happen if Kirkland, who has not gone into the ninth or 10th round recently, certainly not since he got released from prison. We don't know what's going to happen if Kirkland in a close fight in which he's being outscored. We don't know what he's going to have in the ninth and 10th rounds. Let me also say this too. I'll agree, and I know Kirkland fans know, that toward the end of the Alfredo and Gulo fight, Kirkland actually started dancing around the ring, fighting off his back foot a little bit, actually showing some boxing skills, right? It was impressive, but let's get real. That was against Alfredo Angulo. You know what he's going to do, right? It's not that hard to outbox Alfredo Angulo from a technical standpoint, right? My point to you is simply, I don't believe there will be a point in this fight where Kirkland is able to outbox Molina. In other words, it's a light switch. Right? Either Kirkland's able to bully Molina over to the ropes, or he's not and loses the fight by several rounds, in my opinion, like Kermit Cintron lost by several rounds to Carlos Molina. It's a 10-round fight. I think Molina is a live underdog. Let's shift gears. Other than Carlos Molina, another fighter I'm looking at is unbeaten Vernon Paris. Now, I know a lot's been said about Paris, and he looked good beating Tim Coleman. Or did he? As I watched that fight, I saw Paris on the canvas early in that fight against Coleman. Not only that, I recently saw Coleman get undressed by Kendall Holt. Right? He didn't look good. He got beaten up in that short fight. Was Coleman, in hindsight that tough an opponent for Vernon Paris. In fact, let's go further. What exactly does Vernon Paris do better than his opponent, Zab Judah? I think Judah has the faster hands. I think Judah has the bigger punch. I have no idea 
why the casinos have made Judah a slight underdog. Here again, I like the underdog in this fight. I question Vernon Paris. Look, I'm all for a passing of the torch from the older generation to the newer generation. I'm all for it. But you've got to have the skills. You've got to have the goods. I know Vernon Paris is talking a big game. I'm expecting him to get walked down by a faster, harder-hitting fighter. Let's also point out, too, I know Zab Judah looked bad against Amir Khan. But understand that Amir Khan has the faster feet than Zab Judah, has the longer reach, knows how to use height, right? Was able to stay away from Zab Judah. I don't believe Vernon Paris fights that style. So I'm expecting Paris to get his comeuppance, right? I'll be the first to say I was wrong if Paris dominates Judah. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm expecting Judah to win this fight decisively. I wouldn't even be surprised if he doesn't get a knockout, given that Tim Coleman was able to knock down Vernon Paris. I'm betting against the casino on that Zab Judah fight. I think Zab Judah uh, upsets the kid. My final fight, by the way, I have videos already online for both the Carlos Molina, James Kirkland fight, as well as the Zab Judah, uh, Vernon Paris fight. Just go to my channel page and on the channel search, just type in the name of a fighter. You'll see all the videos that I have on that fighter in your search results. Right? You could also just go on Google, punch in the name of a fighter, Vernon Paris, gamblersadvisory.com, and you'll see my take on that match. And you can compare and contrast it with the takes of the other uh, boxing fans here online. Finally, let's talk Eric Morales, Danny Garcia. I know Oscar De La Hoya recently said that this is like his fight against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., you know what? I don't think it is. I believe Eric Morales has more in the tank right now than, uh, not Chavez Jr., but Sr., than Julio Cesar Chavez had when he fought Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Um, <coughs> I thought going into the Oscar Chavez fight, most boxing fans expected Oscar to win that fight and they had good reason because De La Hoya was taller than uh, Chavez and quite frankly with the faster hands and a devastating left hook and since Chavez had faded a bit before that fight I'm not sure how many people were surprised that Oscar De La Hoya won that first fight. Now I'll agree that Morales is the underdog here. But I believe that Danny Garcia is tailor-made for Morales. Right? Danny Garcia is a big hitter with both hands. He typically hits you with hooks, takes you out. I thought he struggled against Ashley Theopane. I thought he looked a little bit questionable against Kendall Holt. Quite frankly, I think when he tries to headhunt on Eric Morales. I believe Morales is going to have all of those punches blocked. Someone is going to have to explain to me what Danny Garcia brings to the table that Marcus Maidana did not. In fact, I would argue that Garcia only hits you in the lower rib cage and on the sides of the head. I don't see too many straight punches. Well, if that's the case, I believe Eric Morales' defense should take over in the match. I don't believe Oscar, again, someone like an Ashley Theopane back in the day, would have struggled as much as Danny Garcia struggled. I know Oscar had his challenges in his prime against Pernell Whitaker. By the way, I still think Whitaker won that fight. While Oscar looked bad against Masters, he didn't look bad against solid fighters who really weren't doing anything that hinted of Hall of Fame consideration. So I think Danny Garcia is a bit overrated. Again, you know what? The new generation, 
go ahead and scream on me if I'm wrong. If Vernon Paris and Danny Garcia show up and dominate, I'll be the first to say I'm wrong. But if Danny Garcia shows up and finds himself getting most of his punches blocked and then getting countered right up the middle, as I suspect he will, and then getting dominated later in the fight, it is a 12-rounder, as I think he will, then I do hope the Danny Garcia contingent and the Vernon Paris contingent, if the same thing happens to him, concede that the sport's about more than youth, that there are actually skills involved that some of these 30-something fighters do better than youngsters. Anyway, I think this weekend has several live underdogs. I think Molina, Zab Judah, and Eric Morales are three of them. Think about it for a second. Right? When have you ever had an opportunity in the same weekend to get both Zab Judah and Eric Morales as underdogs. Not only that, think about Carlos Molina for a second. If Molina got as undressed as James Kirkland did by Ashida, right, would he ever be a favorite against a fighter the caliber of Carlos Molina, right? Well, all I'm saying is Molina has looked dominant of late, has looked great. You know, take a look at the Arislandi Lara fight, the draw. He looks great in that fight, right? Molina has looked great of late. James Kirkland, at a minimum, should be viewed as having looked uneven of late. What is he doing as the favorite in this match, right? Not only that, but think about it. If James Kirkland fought Eris Landy Lara and Kermit Cintron, do you believe that he would have looked as good in those fights as Carlos Molina did? I think the public has gotten a little bit too into James Kirkland at this point. Here again, I'll concede the fighter I'm backing is high risk. He's a plus 170. I'll even agree that Molina lost three in a row earlier in his career. But look at the opponents that he lost to. Those were quality opponents. And as I always say too, you know, when you look at a fighter's worst moment, you always need to ask yourself, has he learned anything since then? I believe Carlos Molina is a different fighter today than he was then. And he's in his prime. He's still in his 20s. To sum up, I hope you look at Molina, Zab Judah, and Eric Morales. We'll talk after the weekend happens. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.